gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. right there where you are as you're tuning in lift those hands and just declare God I want to be close to you somebody just shout out draw me close to you somebody shout it out draw me close to you Jesus never let me go hallelujah hallelujah it's our prayer tonight hallelujah have your perfect will and perfect will Come on, let's lift it up. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Never let me go. Oh, I lay it on. I lay it on. This. You are my desire, oh God. You are my desire. Oh, and no one else. No one else will do. No one else. And no one else. God, we long. It's our prayer tonight. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you. Oh, we sing it. Oh, you're all I want. It's our prayer tonight. You're all I ever needed.
God for again this gift of worship that we can never take for granted and we thank God for our worship ministry that guides us into God's presence every single week and we thank God for the word this is Tuesday night Bible study with Kingdom Fellowship AME Church and I am so grateful to be with you I'm Reverend Dr. Nicole Martin and I'm Dr. Mark Martin and we are so grateful just for this time given to us by our pastor, yes. Pastor Matthew Watley. We thank God for him, for his beautiful wife, Lady Shauna, uh, for Alexandra. And we yes. thank God for the beautiful opportunity we have to study God's word tonight. We are in a series. <laughs> you are because I am. Yes. And we are wrapping up the seven last sayings of Jesus. In fact, pause now, invite a friend, share the link, tell somebody to join in. It's the last week and you don't want to miss it. But you also have a chance to give. You sure do. Yes, and we do. sure do. Um, it's always a great opportunity to give to God, to yes. give back to him. Yes. And so... There are so many different ways at Kingdom Fellowship that you can give to the ministry. Uh, you can give through Givelify, text, yes. website. Walking up to the church. <laughs> up to the church. That's right. Uh, Sunday, yeah. you, even on Sundays you get to give, right? You can give on Sundays. Yes, you can. <laughs> uh, but we are so blessed to have so many ways to yes. give to the work of the kingdom, to That's the work right. of the Lord. Let That's us pray. Right. Mm -hmm. So God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, that portion that we give to give back to you. We yes. get to give back to you. You have been uh, so good to us. You have yes. blessed us so much, oh God. We mm -hmm. thank you for your word tonight. You, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that uh, you'll help us to understand the principles and precepts mm -hmm. that we'll look at tonight. Mm -hmm. So we ask, Holy Spirit, that you have your way, have your way in Lord. this place. It's yes. in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is an understanding of who we are as a result of who Jesus said he was. This I am phrase is actually not first introduced in the Gospels. It's first introduced in the Old Testament. In the book of Exodus, Moses is crying out to God and he wants to know who God is. And in Exodus 3.14, God tells Moses, I am. Jesus reiterates this theme throughout the Gospel of John with with seven I am statements. Let's see if we can recount. <laughs> statement number one is I am the bread of life. Very good. The statement number two is I am the light, light of the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> the light of the world. The statement number three is when Jesus says I am the gate. And number four is when I am the good shepherd. And number five is I am the resurrection and the life. Number six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And number seven is today, I am the true vine. Now the interesting thing as we read today, we're going to see this is the second time when Jesus is using a a threefold metaphor, but I don't want to give it away. So let's read what the scripture says. We're in John 15, one through eight. John chapter 15, one through eight, New International Version, yes. version reads as follows. I am the true vine mm -hmm. and my father is the gardener. Yes. He cuts off every branch in me that yes. bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes yes. so that it will be even more fruitful. Yeah. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Remain in me as I also remain in you. Yes. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Mm -hmm. It must remain in the vine. Yes. Neither can you bear fruit unless mm -hmm. you remain in me. Mm -hmm. Verse five, I am the vine. 
him. You are the branches. Mm-hmm. If you remain in me and I in you, mm-hmm. you will bear f- much fruit. Much Apart fruit. from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch mm-hmm. that is thrown away and withers. Mm-hmm. Such branches are picked up, yes. thrown into the fire yes. and burned. If you remain in me yes. and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Verse 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got quite a bit of context again happening here. We remember from last week in John 14, Jesus is really comforting his disciples. Once you get to John, like the 14th chapter in the Gospel of John, you start to see Jesus make a shift. The first 14 chapters are really Jesus pressing his way in. He's debating with the Pharisees. He's working the miracles. Some believe, some doubt. They're questioning him. It's a lot of activity. But around verse 14, chapter 14 and forward, now you see Jesus taking on a different tone. He's comforting them. Mm -hmm. He's being far more prophetic. Let me tell you what's about to happen. Let me tell you what is going to happen, not just now, but when I die. And not just when I die, but when I come back. And not just when I come back, but for the generations that will believe after I'm gone. And then after that, around chapter 19, we see the, the beginning of the story of crucifixion. So in the context of this chapter, chapter 15 is known as the vine and the branches chapter. But remember, my little foretaste was this is the threefold metaphor. If you look at verse one, Jesus says, I'm the vine. This is metaphor number one. He says, my father is the gardener. Metaphor number two. And who are we? The branches. The branches. Now, (laughs) I'll tell you, every time I read that part, I say, ouch, because in verse two, he says he cuts off. Wow. Every branch in me that wow. bears no fruit <laughs> and so that it can be pruned. Yes. So um, if any of you out there have done gardening, you know yes. that we have to come and prune mm. uh, those plants, kill off, you know, cut off the dead right. spots and everything right. so that it might grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be, you know, uh, uh, counterproductive as yes. we might think of it, yes. but it's a miracle of God mm-hmm. on how he sets it up where we reduce mm-hmm. so that we can grow. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, so I'm not a really a green thumb. I have this thing with plants that you, you know, they don't <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> last very long. We usually wind up buying a new pot for a beautiful new plant and then it just, you know, it just dies. <laughs> so if you're not a gardener um, and you like hair, cause you know, <laughs> hair is a thing now. Um, You can think of this trimming process in the same way. So with women's hair, you have to get a trim in order for your hair to grow. And if you don't get a trim, what happens is the hair might grow longer, but it grows with split ends. So you have, you know, you have like the hair shaft and there are little pieces on it. If you're not careful, if you don't trim it regularly, what grows are multiple pieces of the shaft. And the challenge is if you let your hair go for too long without getting a trim, then when you do go get a trim, it's a big one. Wow. So a lot of people say you should trim your hair every six to eight weeks because if you go longer than that, you might end up having to trim several inches just to stay healthy. This perhaps, yes. now Jesus didn't say if you, you know, I'm, he didn't say I'm the hair <laughs> and you're part of the hair shaft. But in this example, you do see Jesus saying the only way to bear fruit yeah. is if you're pruned. Yes. The only way to grow is if you're trimmed. Yes. The only way is to pare back. Yeah. Okay. And it's almost like the parts of us that are not really productive. Yeah. He's taking it away. Yeah. And so it's not that he takes it away and that part of us could only get to that point in productivity. No, he says, I'm going to take off this dead spot. And guess what? It's going to continue to grow, which is amazing. You know, it is amazing. And I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, Lord, why is this so hard, though? I wonder if it's hard. The the pruning process is so hard Mm -hmm. because Maybe we, when we don't prune enough, like in the trimming example, Mm -hmm. then we do get attached to this extra growth, even when it's unhealthy. So when God comes and says, listen, it's time to cut off that relationship. Yes. It's time to stop that addiction. Yes. It's time to stop that dependency. Yes. Often that pruning process is hard because we've gotten attached to it. We've gotten attached to it. We've gotten what? 
comfortable. Ah, oh, we've gotten comfortable. We've gotten with comfortable, it. and and you know, God is not like that. No. You know, um, the, the 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 funny thing about it is, we grow in the discomfort. Ah, <laughs> no, be real. We only grow in the discomfort. I wish it were another way. I wish I would run to Jesus when everything was going great. I wish I would be on my knees all the time when things were successful. But the reality of my life. Yes is that I am most devoted to God mm -hmm. when I have challenges. Oh my goodness, challenges. And here's the amazing thing. It's not just challenges yeah. that are designed in the pruning process, mm -hmm. but these are challenges that actually educate. Mm. These are challenges right. that grow us. That's right. These are challenges that prepare us That's for right. the next assignment. That's exactly right. Yeah. So in this text, Jesus does give us a secret on how we can do this. Yeah. It's not just, I'm the vine, you're the branches, I'm going to prune you, I'm going to cut you, I'm going to trim you. Right. No, he says, in verse 4, he introduces something yes. that is the key to, to being okay in the pruning process, and that is remaining in me. Correct. Your connection. S staying in Jesus, keeping that connection, <sighs> remaining in him, mm. because he is the life yes, in us. Yes, yes. So stay attached. That's, That's what right. he's saying. That's right. And the King James Version talks about abiding. If you abide yes. in me and I abide in you, this understanding of abide is, is not just, you know, hang on to me every once in a while. It's not just take a piece of me with you in the day. This is dwell yes. in me. Yes. Meditate on me. Yes. It goes right back to the first I am statement, yes. the bread of life. It consume me, take me in, and let me grow in you. Yes. So this isn't just you stay connected to me, but there's a mutual let me yes. stay in you and you stay in me. Yes. And at a certain point, if I'm in him and he's in me, then there ought to be a seamless connection between me and yes. Jesus. Because we seamless. know each other so well. Yeah. We're spending quality time together. Yes. We are getting to know each other. That's we right. are growing in That's each other. Right. And it's amazing. Jesus sets it up as yeah. you abide in me yes. or, or stay in me. Yes. You abide in me and I abide in you. Mm -hmm. But he already knows all there is to know about me. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And not only does he know everything about you, for better and worse, <laughs> but he still says, I want to dwell there in you. you. In like, you, yes. Do you realize, Lord, how sinful I am, how yes. challenged I am, and yet you choose to abide he with me? He condescends consistently That's to right. us. That's the exactly creator right. of the universe exactly who spoke right. the worlds into existence. Have you all mm. seen those wonderful photographs from the uh, Webb uh, telescope? Oh, they're beautiful. It tells they're us beautiful. that this universe is just huge. These pictures the, are beautiful. Oh my goodness. And the way that they outline the size of the universe and all these planets just hanging yes. in darkness, the one who created mm. that, the mm. worlds that we can't discover, mm. says what? Abide, abide in me and I abide in you. <laughs> I remember when we went to the planetarium, when yeah. we took the girls to the Maryland Science yeah. Center, I love the planetarium because, you know, the seats all recline, yeah. you got the big Jesus. dome and you're mm -hmm. looking up. And what they do is they zoom you um, into the sky that you see. Yes. Then you zoom in even further and you're like, you know, 100,000 light years in. Yes. And then they keep zooming and keep zooming and keep zooming. And what you realize is mm -hmm. what we see is just a small part of a small galaxy oh. and that there are billions of galaxies. Oh my goodness. Just to think that that God says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. But here's the best part. Jesus really could have left it there. Yes. I'm the, I'm the vine, you're the branches, he's the gardener. Mm -hmm. Just abide in me, that's the extent of our relationship, and the gift that you get is you get to be with me, but he doesn't end it there. If you look at verse seven, yeah. he says, if you remain in me, mm -hmm. and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done to you. Not ask for the Lamborghini, or the mansion, but ask for whatever you wish. Why? This is for my Father's glory, yes. so that you might bear much fruit. Yes. So the asking here is in the context of bearing fruit. Yes. If you are in me and I am in yes. you, whatever you need to bear much fruit and show the world that you are my disciples, you shall have it. Yes. So, so that's wonderful. Mm. So when we're abiding in Jesus, abiding in the Lord, yeah. okay, we'll know the right things to ask for. Mm. And it's asking in that context mm. for whatever we want, whatever we wish, because we're not asking amiss as James talks That's about. exactly right. Yeah. There's a, I, I want to say it's um, Psalm 34, yeah. 
um, where it, if you um, trust in the Lord and he will give you the desires of yes. your heart. Yes. And it's actually an interesting cycle. Yes. Because the more you trust him and the more you love him, the more you desire of him. Yes. The more you desire of him, the more you ask for more of him. This is not, if you love me and if you trust me, I'll give you all this stuff out here. The reality is if you abide in me and if you love me and you trust me, you're gonna want more of me. You're gonna ask for more of me and I will give it to you. This is a beautiful thing because at the end of the day, we are who we are as ones who bear witness of who Jesus is. That is our primary purpose in life. Yes. My goal, your goal, our, yes. our purpose in life yes. is to bear witness of the Father yes. and to show the world the one who loves them and who is coming for them again. Yeah. Um, bear witness of the Father yeah. to worship him. That's was right. created for worship, as exactly uh, Rick, right. Warren, Rick Warren says. Mm -hmm. um, it, I just find it, I mean, I can't seem to move off of this gigantic God mm -hmm. cares about me. And all my shortcomings. It's amazing. And wants to dwell with you. And wants to hang out. That's right. <laughs> wants to hang out. And not just a couple of times. So this, mod this motif of you stay with me and I'll stay with you and everything yes. will be all right is repeated throughout yes. scripture. Yes. You have Jesus in Revelation. He's saying, behold, I stand at the door and no. knock. You know, he's saying every time, invite me in and I'll invite you. I'll be close to you. There's this, there's this sense of Jesus saying, if you just give me one yes, I will give you the world. Mm. If you just allow a tiny bit of room for me, I will make that room expansive. Yes. All you have to do is give me just a portion Yes. And I'll take care of the rest. Yes. That is an amazing, loving, miraculous God. Yes. And in verse seven, if you remain in me yeah. and my words yeah. remain in you, ask yes. whatever you wish. His words, his words That's are right. life. That's right. And so when we start talking about spiritual disciplines and yeah. creating a cadence yes. of Bible reading, That's right. Bible studying, Mm -hmm. um, creating a cadence yeah. of studying the mm -hmm. Bible uh, in the sense of the whole context. Yeah. Uh, when we start journaling, mm -hmm. okay, this is all built around God's word. That's right. Okay, we have that in us. Yes, we he do. says, um, "Ask whatever you wish, mm -hmm. and it will be done for you." A That's promise right. that right. we can hang our hats on. That's so amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're wrapping up this series, and the whole point was to let us know who we are yes. because of who he is. Yes. And we're gonna take this moment right now to tell you who you are. You are one who can feed on the bread of life. Yes. You are the one who radiates the light of yes. Christ into the world. You are the one who knows the gate and you know the gatekeeper, you know the good shepherd because you are God's chosen sheep. You are the ones who can follow the resurrection. You're the ones who can go on the way because you know who he is. You are the ones right now who are given the gift of abiding in the vine. And if you've been wondering who you are, let God's word tell you who you are. You are the yes. beloved child of God. Yes. You are the chosen one. You are God's poem, his poetry. You, yes. are, you are the mm. apple of his eye. Yes. Your, your name is written on the palm of his hand. Yes. God wants you to know who you are because if you don't know who you are, you will allow any and everything in this world to define you. Yes. God loves you. Yes, it's as does. simple as that. And he knows who you are. Yeah. And it's up to us to know who we are. Yes. Particularly as it relates to him. Yes. As you so eloquently stated. Yeah. God is just, <laughs> I'm starting to get full here. God I know. is just awesome. He's so awesome. He is absolutely awesome. And so those of you who are heeding this call tonight, yes. we thank mm. God for you. We, right. we know that you're not making a mistake. Mm -hmm. We know that yeah. this is an eternal move yes. on your part. Yes. And God doesn't force himself on us. Yep. And he invites us in yes. for, guess what? Our own good. Yes, he does. Right? Yes, he does. And if you've been tracking along with us, if there's nothing else that you hear for, throughout this entire series, know that you are loved because God is love and he demonstrates that love for you through the person of Jesus Christ yes. who gave his life for you. Mm. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his life that whoever believes in him mm -hmm. shall not perish but have everlasting life.
If you've not accepted Jesus, if you don't quite know who he is, today is the day to know him. We know who he is by his word. And his word says, if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved. Accept salvation today. Don't wait till tomorrow. It's not promised. Today you can receive Christ. Today you can enter into relationship with Jesus. Today, if you have strayed away, if you've lost sight, you can rekindle your relationship with Jesus with just one word. And that word is yes. Yes, Jesus. I accept your love. Yes, Jesus. I know who you are. Yes, Jesus. I want to get to know you. And I invite you into my life today. And that's the prayer that we want to pray with you today. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Oh, precious Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this series of teachings. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your word. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for... Thank you, Jesus. Each week, those who have heard your call yes. and have said yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you for making it so simple. Thank you, Jesus. For us to have eternal life. Yes. For us to abide in you. Yes, yes. We thank you, Lord God, mm -hmm. for what you're going to do with each and every life yes, that was saved, you, each and every life that was rededicated to you, thank you Jesus. for your glory mm -hmm. and for your honor. Mm -hmm. We look forward to the testimonies that will come forth yes, Lord. Of, the, of the tales of fruit that was born yes. because someone said yes to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, thank for your, Jesus. Son's Je your son, Jesus Christ. Yes and for the sacrifice that yes. he made yes. on our behalf, yes. that he willingly laid down his life mm -hmm. and took it up again, mm -hmm. that he endured the scourging you, Jesus. and the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord God, thank you, Lord. that you sacrificed so much that we might be with you. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless you. Mm -hmm. We honor you. We magnify you. Mm -hmm. It is in the mighty matchless name Jesus of Jesus name. the Christ that we do pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Man, thank you all so much just for joining this journey with us. Our pastor is about to kick off a brand new series in the month of September. Don't let your study stop here. Yes. Stay in the word. Stay connected yes. to the vine. Stay in the process of studying and learning who Jesus is. And I really want to say, stay kingdom, kingdom focused. focused. <laughs> God bless you.